head of our political desk, uh, Evan Spencer, via Zoom at this point. He's one of the, the few who had one of the last interviews with Sir John on PM Express that ended a while ago. And um, he had that interview with him. Um, Evans, good evening. Um, we're hoping we could talk on a better note, but you've lost a friend as well, Sir John. Um, I'm sure the news hits you in a different way. Share with us. Well, it's um, it's sad, um, sad evening, sad day. Um, Sir John, I interviewed him twice actually last year um, when there was a lot of controversy surrounding uh, the Forestry Commission. Um, he was he's always been affable. In fact, I might I describe him as a friend. Um, Sir John travels, and I'll call him and always trying to get him to come so we have a conversation. And he has this way of approaching politics and, and being absolutely blunt with, with the way he approached uh, issues, which I like. I mean, I, 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 it's one of the things that endeared me to him because of, his, of the way he simply took on issues. The last time I interviewed him must have been the last quarter of last uh, year um, when we had a, that. Um, I, I, I've seen that you played that interview back. Um, he was his usual active, vivacious self when we when we spoke. Uh, this is a tragedy. It's a tragedy for the country. It's um, it's a pretty bleak, bleak day um, for the New Patriotic Party family, and uh, our hearts go out to his immediate family. Uh, we must spare thought uh, for his immediate family, for his for his son. Um, Sir John is loved by many people, even his opponents. I can tell you on authority, admired him. He reached across the political divide. I mean, those of us who were privileged to know him um, knew how those, even within the NDC, respected him. When what you see Sir John do in the public space, as in when you turn on the camera, and his tenacity, his, uh, his goading of the NDC, that is not who he was in private. In private, he was a very loving person. He puts on that persona that you see on television, here on radio, the, um, the, the fiery, the... Uh, fire and brainstorm talk. Okay, Evans, uh, it looks like we have a better connection to you. So let's talk about uh, the impact and the timing of this incident. I, we know that he hasn't been in active politics over the period uh, because of his appointment as chief executive of the Forestry Commission. But what do you see happening in terms of the impact on the NPP's campaign, for instance? I mean, the, uh, it will have an impact. I mean, um, this was somebody who, when he was a general secretary, uh, proved his mettle um, in terms of guiding the political party to a face that was a pretty difficult face for them. Um, he was, he, you see, the, the thing about Sir John and the MPP is, the MPP is often, in contrast to the NDC, seen as an elitist political party. Their inability to connect with the masses um, has been a big challenge for the MPP over the years. And that is one of the places where the NDC had had an upper hand in terms of the ability to connect with the elitary, the masses out there. Sir John was one of those unique individuals in the MPP who had this very um, um, <laughs> interesting unique mm -hmm. ability to connect with with people of of all classes really particularly those you categorize as the masses the everyday Ghanaian um in 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 in, in the in the rural communities Sir John was unique and if you were gonna win an election and this is gonna be a very very keenly contested one a lot of these voters, you find those who sometimes in their numbers, you find the rural communities, you would need a Sir John. You would need a Sir John in the remote parts of the country helping you with his ability to wow the masses and endear himself to them.
to get them on your side, to get them on the side of the NPP, uh, something that has been the Achilles heel for years. It is, it is, um, it is a reason, in fact, that he was made the um, chief executive of the mm. Forestry Commission. I mean, he, he, if we talk to Sir John, he tells you he's a village man. Yeah. I mean, but this is a loyal client, so you know, he's a, he says he's a village man. And he, 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 people forget, he transformed the Forestry Commission. He, he made um, changes. I remember when I spoke to him in one of the last interviews, he made a very controversial point. And this was at the, at the heart of the, at the heart of the fight against illegal mining. He, he stood up and, and spoke the truth about how powers above him had interfered, for example, in some of the work that he was doing to try and bring sanity to to the forest that he supervises and and in the and in the elite in, in the mining generally. And he didn't really care if it had he had to step on a few toes within his own party mm -hmm. just to do the right thing. He got people arrested and he really stood firm in the fight against the illegal mining. And, and that is something that the MPP will, will lose, but this country will lose as well because of um, his, his tenacity with fighting mm -hmm. COVID-19. The MPP will definitely lose his ability to connect with the masses going forward. Mm -hmm. They need somebody like Sir John in these elections, and it's so unfortunate that they've lost him. But most importantly, I guess, we should not forget his immediate family. Yeah, and of course, uh, we'll talk about um, his work and the, the, the tools that he happened to step on in the line of duty. But of course, I'm sure you can recount uh, his relationship with uh, those in the opposition as well, especially um, Asiedun Ketia, for instance, and the issues about uh, uh, Kukua Sekrachi and, uh, and other issues, not forgetting uh, his you know, episode on fear delegates. I mean... <laughs> You mm -hmm. will understand why Sir John and Asir Nketiah, it's almost like love at first sight, because they're so similar in their politicking, but also in the way they rub off the ordinary man on the streets. They speak their minds, and they often speak it in a raw form. It is without screening and they speak the truth in ways that will shock you because we are so used to the polished politics of the NPP. And, and of course, we need some folks of the NDC as well. I mean, Sir John and General Mosquito have the unique ability to, you know, cut beyond the, go beyond the, the formalities and the euphemisms and say it as it is. I mean, in the political dictionary of this country and lexicon who we'll all remember fear delegates i mean he introduced that and this was a man who has just lost <laughs> an election yeah but he found his yes i mean he found a way to make light of that but also left us with some strong words i mean we all knew delegates are powerful but he said, look, forget about the ghost delegates are the people you need to fit we will not forget that i mean his his, there's a reason why Sir John, Sir, um, General Mosquito loved it because yeah. they, he, he, he knew who he was and, and he, he, he reached out on um, beyond the, the, the politics and was sincerely, genuinely um, making half friends from the NDC and across the board really. That for me was, was key. And, and it, as, as I say, as he, I considered him as a friend. Mm. We talked every now and then, and this this is this is uh, this is pretty heartbreaking news to hear that he's passed on. I know. So, in um, the two interviews, for instance, that you had cause to uh, have with uh, Sir John on PM Express, largely was on the illegal mining and, and of course, the illegal trading of, of felling of rosewood, for instance. So, it brings me to the issue about the, the tolls that he may have stepped on in the line of duty because he wanted uh, the right thing done, for instance. So, it, it came up a couple of times in the interviews that you had with him. It did. It did. Um, and that was one of the things that. Um, and then one of the abiding memories I have of him was speaking to him and he was being absolutely forceful about powers that be that were making his job 
um, difficult and how he didn't care, um, but he was only motivated by his desire to do good by us, the people who had put him there, and to serve the president and indirectly serve us, because the president had put him there and has hanged his own political um, uh, fortunes around the fight against against the against legal mining. Um, for me, he also introduced the afforestation um, initiative in the when he was at the Forestry Commission, employed hundreds, thousands of of forest forest guards, um, and and gave them tools to go and plant. He, he had a target of planting. Um, thousands of trees across the country and he had recruited an army of people uh, and just for the purpose of planting trees because he knew that not we, we, we could not only stop um, illegal mining but once you stop it you have to replace the degraded forest that had been left in this week and he was in the process of doing that he had secured and he had fought for this but people forget he had, he had fought for the government to make provision for the people that he had employed to be paid. I mean, living wages to plant trees. I mean, that is almost unprecedented in our history in terms of the Forestry Commission. And, and, and there's one of the things I said at the beginning of the, my last interview with him. Hardly will you ever, before Sir John, talk about the Forestry Commission. But Sir John went to the Forestry Commission and the Forestry Commission was a constant item in the news. Sometimes for 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 worse, but oftentimes for better as well. I mean, it was for worse sometimes when we had all the allegations of rosewood. And listen, I went to Sir John and I was doing an interview with him, and people were challenging that they had actually uh, seized rosewood and had destroyed them. He said he walked me out. I mean, together. I mean, we walked out together and showed me rosewood that had just been impounded, that was just about to be destroyed, to prove that indeed he was doing the job that he had been he had been taxed to do. I mean, that was his legacy. His legacy will be the, the thousands of trees that he has started to plant across the country and the army of people that he has fought to to nail to get employed to do the planting. Um, those were some of the key reforms that he had introduced. And he was he was about to introduce more reforms. One of the key things that he was going to do was to get forestry guards armed, because some of them were being killed in the process of stopping illegal mining. And he, he, had, he had worked to get them um, appropriately tooled to do the job of guarding our forest. I mean, that for me is one of the key things that going forward... Um, we will start reaping the results, if indeed, in his, in now that he's gone, um, those who will succeed him will continue with his legacy of standing up in spite of being a leading figure in the NPP, saying the truth about people interfering and standing his ground when he had to. Um, if you have two words, or maybe make it three, to describe Sir John, what will they be? Affable, definitely somebody who, um, definitely not, I've, I've extended my three words, but affable. Um, he was, he's a true politician, astute um, lawyer, by the way, people forget about that, uh, and, and, and devoted to the service of his party and to the country. And Ghana will miss him. And he was indeed loyal to that cause. Evans, uh, you've also lost a friend. Our condolences. Thank you so much. And that's the head of our political desk, Evans Mensah, uh, there joining us uh, via Zoom. And we've been looking at the life of Kwejo Owusu Efriye, Sir John. We lost him, unfortunately, today. And we've been um, trying to reach uh, the NDC um, chairman, uh, Kwejo Owusu Ampofo, I beg your pardon. And he's also struck by the news, unable uh, to see, speak about it just yet and that's the situation we are faced with a lot of talk on uh, social media and one man who wrote a number of articles in the area of uh, illegal felling of rosewood for instance most of the time that we've had to speak to him on radio 
uh, you have said John on the other line always because he kept him on his toes in that office. Dr. Clementa Park joins us on the phone. Dr. Park, good evening. And I'm sure you're struck by this as well. Uh, but let's talk about the man, Sir John. He's no more. How did you receive the news and what is, what's running through your mind now? Well, let me say good evening to you and say good evening to listeners. Uh, I'm currently in my constituency, Boots of South, uh, in my village, as uh, many would expect every MP to, to be. Uh, and indeed, you just broke the news to me, because I've not had access to uh, the Internet most of the day. And so it really comes as a, as a shock, because I really had no idea that uh, Sir John uh, was ill, uh, let alone uh, to have had any indication. Mm. Well, did we lose um, Dr. Park on the phone? So, Dr. Park, if I still have you, uh, we're told that um, he took ill a few days ago. But I was saying earlier that your one man who has kept Sir John on his toes since he became chief executive of the Forestry Commission, one article after the other, um, almost every week or so, uh, you were always putting something out on illegal rosewood trading. Um, I would want to find out uh, from you your assessment of his work as Chief Executive Officer of the Forestry Commission now that he's passed. Well, it appears that uh, Dr. Clementa Park has a bad connection and we've just lost him on the phone, but we'll reconnect shortly and uh, we'll speak to him about the man, Sir John, and his close working relationship uh, with him, uh, for instance, because he is in that constituency, Bursa South, and he's had calls to always raise concerns about illegal rosewood trading. And um, a number of issues have come up in that line, and he's been interacting with him closely. The man said John is no more. And that's the situation uh, that we are faced with now. Sir John has kicked the bucket. He passed early today, and uh, the NPP and uh, the entire country is mourning at this point. But at this point, we'll listen to videos, fondest memories that we all will cherish. <laughs> 